people in. There you go. Oh, people are coming in. No, yes, yeah. seven. Hi, everybody. I, uh, I recognize some names on the attendee list, so that's really nice to see. Um, I'm Julia with the Halifax Chamber of Commerce and Member Services. I've certainly met some of you, but if I haven't, I'd love to meet you going forward. Uh, but today, we're really excited because we're hosting a webinar um, with Nicole Gallant, marketing, marketing uh, strategist, sales professional. Um, and we're going to be talking about story brand framework, a storytelling formula to help businesses communicate their most powerful messages simply and clearly, which, you know, that's so important to be able to communicate and uh, to varying audiences. So um, what I'm going to say is just make sure that your uh, computer is muted. Um, Nicole's presentation is about 30, 35 minutes, and we'll get started here in a minute. Um, during the presentation, um, if you want to put questions in the chat box, certainly feel free, uh, but we'll make sure we answer those at the end. Um, and Nicole, typically um, we do have words, uh, you know, that we put together for these webinars, but, um, and part of that is introducing our host. Um, but I always like to leave it to you because you're the expert at your yourself and your your, I guess, experience. So if you want to introduce yourself to the crew here, there's a, a great number of attendees on the call. So would love if you took the time to introduce yourself and uh, so no one has to listen to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> sure, thanks so much, Julia. Thank you. I'm so happy you guys are all here this morning. So I'm Nicole Gallant and I own SmartCat Marketing. I started in 2015 and I help service-based businesses clarify their message so they can attract quality clients. I've been doing that since I started, but when I was certified in February of 2022, then I was able to articulate this seven step framework and I find it's really creating more results for my clients. So it's really, really exciting. I don't know what else you need to know about me. Um, I come from the corporate world. So sales and marketing has been part of my life since pretty much since I graduated. So. <laughs> I've been in it for a while and um, I'm excited to I'm excited to present this type of story and what story brand is and how it will make a difference in your business's lives. Incredible. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, so if you want to get started, the floor is yours. And like I had mentioned earlier, if you just want to keep your microphone muted and you can put any questions in the chat box and we'll get to those at the end. So I'm really excited to hear about this because I love storytelling and it's one of my favorite things to do. And I think that's how we can connect with others. So uh, looking forward to today. Perfect. So we're all ready. We're all good to go. We're all good to go. All right. So I'm going to jump right in. Most companies waste an enormous amount of money on marketing. It's a sad truth, but it happens. But when I tell you why, you're going to feel, you're going to feel it in your bones. You truly are. Here's the reason. Year after year, dollar after dollar, we trust our message to design agencies, graphic artists, who have degrees in design and Photoshop, but they're not experienced in how to clarify a marketing message. If we take a look at this website as a perfect example right off the bat, if you take a look at this, can you tell what this business does? I'm guessing the answer is gonna be no, right? Your journey starts here. Journey to what? I think there's a photographer down in the image, but is this a photographer? right? Artisan innovative solutions. What, is, what does that mean, right? And then it's got learn more. Learn more what? <laughs> we don't really even know what this is. Get started. Get started doing what? So this is an example of really vague messaging. The imagery might be great. The structure might be great. But when the client jumps on here, we call this doesn't pass what we call the grunt test. You don't know what this business represents. But the reality is, is people buy products only after they read words that make them want to buy those products. 
So in this talk, what I'm going to explain is why almost all of us have been talking to our customers the wrong way and how if we keep doing it wrong, we're going to lose to the competition. And we don't want that. So I'm going to show you a framework you can use to clarify your message so customers listen to you and listen to what you offer. The framework will definitely change the way you talk about your products and services and might even change the way you actually do business. But before I show you the framework, I'm going to explain just a little bit about how the human brain works. And you may have seen this before if you've read the book, which is if you've read this book here, Story Brand Book. I don't know if some of you here may have. Our brains are designed to do two things above all else. The first thing our brains are designed to do is help us survive and thrive. So if I was to think of an example, it would be just think of when you go to Starbucks. You go to Starbucks, when you walk into Starbucks, do you know how many tiles there are in the ceiling? Do you know how many tables there are in the room? Probably not. But you probably know where, the count, where you're supposed to stand at the counter to order your coffee. Right. So the brain is just filtering out stuff. We don't need to know that stuff, but this is what we need to do to do to get our coffee. And in that point, it's to survive and thrive. The second thing our brains want to do is conserve calories. It's so we can ignore and filter out stuff that we don't need, similar to number one. We're exposed to so much random stuff in the run of the day. So we turn stuff out. We tune things off. Just think when you drive to work or if you're going to the grocery store, could you, could you tell somebody how many signs you passed, what the sign said? How many cars did you pass? What colors were the cars? Could you tell us all the car license plates? No, no. That would be too much for us to consume for our brains to consume on our way to get the groceries or go to work. Your clients are like that, right? We scarcely, no, sorry. We scarily drive on autopilot and our brains are like that sometimes as well. We don't need to know all those things. So we want to conserve calories. Let's see if my slide is stuck. Here we go. So. When it comes to talking about your business or brand, how well are you doing? Are you able to give simple, relevant information about the problem you solve? Or do you give too much information using terms that aren't understood about your industry? And, or you're in a presentation and you're stumbling over your words. Our potential customers have burning questions. So if they're not answered, they're going to move on to another brand. And you guys know that in, in networking and things like that, right? They're not paying attention. The good news is we can harness the power of story to change all of that. And when we change the way we talk about our business, we can attract the right customers and our business will grow. And here's why. If you confuse, you'll lose. Our brand needs to explain how we can help somebody survive and thrive. And we need to do it simply so people don't have to burn a lot of calories, brain calories, to understand what we're telling them. Just think of your competitor. Your competitor might to you, but you might feel has an inferior product. But if they can communicate more clearly than you, they're gonna beat you in the market every time. Story is a sense-making device. The best way to compel a human brain is to use the power of story. The organizational structure of a good story helps us stop burning calories and pay attention. So it helps us listen to the things that are going to help us survive and thrive, especially as consumers, right? Story keeps our attention because we want to know how it ends. And if you think about the movies that you go to, you usually don't fall asleep in a movie theater. You've chosen to go see that movie and that story, you're engaged in it and you really like that story because you wanna know how it ends. Now, stories, whether they're on the screen or what you do for your clients and your marketing, they're formulaic. But we go through each element, but as we go through each element of this framework, you're going to have a big realization about how to brand your business connect with customers and stop wasting money on marketing that doesn't work. You guys ready? 
A story starts when a character wants something. Your client wants something. So there's two mistakes that both in movies, screenwriters and brands make when it comes to creating a story. One, they either don't define something their customer wants or the character wants, or two, they talk about too many things that they offer that the customer might want. So think about, I'll go back to movies because we all, we all can use this and we can all kind of um, relate to this analogy. If you wrote a movie about Jason Bourne, so maybe some of the younger folks have never watched one of the Jason Bourne movies, but if you wrote a book or a movie about Jason Bourne and you want to know in the movie, you want to know who he is. That's what he wants to know in the movie. That's all what the movie's about. He wants to know his identity, he wants to know who he is. But think about if the movie is, he also, part of the movie is he wants to lose 30 pounds. He wants to marry the girl that he met at the coffee shop. Oh, and he wants to run that marathon. And he wants to adopt the cat that he saw at the SPCA. You're gonna lose the audience, right? That's a lot. Why? Too many things to keep track of and remember. The audience wouldn't be able to follow the plot because they're burning mental calories just to follow along. When we're talking about our business, we have to define something our customer wants. Story brand, marketing principle number one. It has to be generic enough to encompass our whole brand, but specific enough to what, where they understand what creates a sense of desire in them. So the next element of stories problem, and you guys, I know you've heard that, right? We're always talking about the problem because we have to solve a problem. But the thing is, no story works unless the character encounters a problem. There's no business story if the customer doesn't have a problem. It's what makes a story interesting. If there's no problem, there's no story. So the reason a character has to encounter a problem early in the story is because the problem posits a story question. Will the character get out of the problem? How bad will the damage be if they don't? Will they get their happy ending? Will they defeat their enemy? Will they defeat the competition? This is why stories are so compelling to the human brain. They posit a series of questions. I lost my, <laughs> they posit a series of questions that they need answered. So if you watched a movie where the main character just walked, just think of it. If a main character, you're watching this movie and they're just walking on the beach, they're enjoying the sun and that's it. That's, that's the movie. They're just walking on the beach and they're happy and the sun is shining and everything is wonderful. You'd be bored out of your mind. You'd be waiting for the shark to show up. <laughs> Problems that the hero has to overcome makes story interesting. I mean, what is Jaws without the shark? Right, you need a problem. Story brand marketing principle number two. Defining something our customer wants gets them excited, but no story starts until the hero encounters a problem, which is your client. If you stop talking about your customer's problems, they're gonna stop paying attention to your brand. Now, I don't mean your business, don't say things like your business is gonna crash and burn if you don't buy my thing. That's not, with the, that's not that, we don't go quite in that direction. I mean, real everyday problems your client would pay money to solve. When we define something that is keeping our hero, the customer, from getting what they want, we set the hook. Now, the customer is wondering whether or not we can help them solve their problem at this point in time. So now that we've hooked our customer by agitating their desire, by defining a problem that is keeping them from getting what they want, they're feeling a little frustrated maybe feeling a little even hopeless. Okay, I've got this problem, but now what? Who on earth am I going to hire? Who am I going to trust? Who's out there who can get the job done? For centuries, storytellers have been bringing in another character at this point to help them find their way. At StoryBrand, we call this character the guide. The guide has one job in the movie, 
and you as the person with your client, and it's to help your hero win the day. So for this reason, we highly recommend that you, your brand never play the hero in your content, but always the guide. In stories, characters don't solve their own problems. So if they could, you wouldn't have much of a story. If you think of, um, for those of you maybe who've watched Hunger Games, right? Hamish plays the guide to Katniss. In Star Wars, we've got Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi, for those of you that are star, that are sci-fi fans. Um, they play the guide to Luke Skywalker. The guide has one job to solve. And that is basically simply to be there for the hero. So story brand marketing principle number three, when it comes to telling your company's story, customers aren't looking for other heroes. So here, so this is important. They are the hero in their story. If you try to position your company as the hero, then you're putting yourself in a different story than your customer. So what happens there is they might find you interesting. They might even like you, but they're not going to trust that you can solve the problem because you're in a competing story because you want to be the hero because you're the one who's so great, but the customer and the hero is the one that wants to be great. So the biggest paradigm shift you can experience in understanding how to create clear messaging is that you should never position your company as the hero of your client's story. Your customer is the hero. You're the guide. Now at this point, your customer's story, they likely want what you have to offer, but they're not gonna make a purchase yet. Why? Because for the first time in their journey, there's a risk, right? If they buy something, they could lose. They could lose their money. It's gonna, maybe it's a bad investment, it's a risk. They could lose their time, all the time involved in working into this project or hiring this person or their pride. What if this goes down the toilet and it's kind of competition or colleagues find out, right? You could lose. There's a lot of risk here, especially if you're, if you're a company who offers higher ticket items, right? The risk is maybe lower if you're selling pizzas, but if you're selling, if you're selling higher end things, the risk is higher. So we want to lessen that. So we want to give them an easy plan to follow, to lessen that sense of risk. It's not a, it's kind of like, if I could give you an analogy, it's kind of like if you're, if you're camping somewhere and you want to, there's, you've got this Creek, right? You've got this Creek, you want to cross the other side, but you've got these brand new shorts, these brand new flip-flops, you don't want to get them wet, but you really want to get to the other side. Are you going to risk ruining your brand new shorts to go across this creek? No. But if somebody, if you saw three stepping stones, three rocks or something that you knew you could safely cross over to get the other side, then you're probably more likely to do it. Well, a client's plan is kind of like that. It's to help them get to the other side. So story brand marketing principle number four is as a brand, we want to give our customers baby steps, not huge steps, baby steps that they can take to do business with us. So if, I don't know if there's any software companies here today, but if you're a software company, your, your three-step plan could look like this. Number one, download our software, go through our short tutorial, enjoy the results, right? Those are your three steps. Just telling them what to do, just download our software, this is what you're going to, these are the expectation. You're going to go through our short tutorial. And the third is enjoy the results, right? It's not complicated, but it's giving, laying out a plan so the client can envision what is next, what is the process. So just listening three or four of these steps a customer can take to enjoy the results your product can give them. And it greatly increases the chance that they're going to take that risk, that they're going to take that leap if they know that there's a plan. People want direction, right? So show them how to get there. There's nothing worse than jumping on a website and there's no, what do I do? Okay, I'm here and I'm reading all about you, right? You're the hero in your story and there's no plan and I don't know what's next. And as a client, what do I do, right? You're assuming that your client jumps on your website and knows what they should do, but do they? 
Our hero needs one more thing before they'll finally fully step into the story. They need us to call them to action. So our customers are reluctant to take the action on their own. They need direction to take that action. So again, if I use the analogy of a movie, oftentimes if you're watching an action-packed movie, a bomb literally has to go off for the protagonist to do something, take action, right? Something has to happen to force them to move. Now, in reality, we don't quite have to um, use these type of tactics, obviously, but this kind of reasoning is still true in real life. So the principle number five, people don't take action unless they're challenged to take the action. Did you know 70% of small businesses do not have a strong call to action on their website? They're losing leads and opportunities because of it. And it's, it's kind of sad, right? Because it's an easy fix. There should be one obvious button on your website to press, and it should be the direct call to action. So if your website has a bunch of links, especially at the top, you're losing sales because you're confusing your visitor on where to press and what to do next. So brands tend to make two critical mistakes in this area of their marketing. They, they don't make their calls to action clear enough, what I just said, right? Or they have so many vague call to actions that the customer can't figure out what they want to do. Just think about, think about the last time you've been on somebody's website, a great website versus a website. And you're like, I don't know what's going on here. You're going to go back and you're going to look at this differently because now you've got this different filter to look at things with. So some of you have get started on your website. So I'm going to challenge you and ask you, get started on what? Does the customer know what their get starting means? Does your customer know your process? Most likely they don't. So get started is a very passive ineffective call to action. But words like buy now, I know what that means. Words like book your appointment now, call for a quote, I know what that means and I'm more likely to take that action. Every story ends one of two ways. The character either gets what they want or they don't. There's either a successful ending or the story ends in failure. What this means for your story or for a story to be compelling is there has to be something at stake. So what we mean by that is there has to be, the hero is either trying to avoid a tragic ending, your customer is trying to avoid a pain point of some sort, or they're trying to work towards something, which is the positive part, but it's still a pain point. Don't let that confuse you between pain points having to be always the negative. They can be the positive. You can reverse engineer that message, but they're still called the stakes. What are the stakes? So they're both positive and they're negative to create a story that's compelling. So the positive stakes in the story is success, right? That could be through testimonials. It could be through case studies. It could simply be three or four bullet points on your website further down that just state what does success look like for your client. And again, think, think there, remember there's no, if there's no success and there's no failure, you really don't have the story. In Wonder Woman, right? If Wonder Woman didn't have any enemy to conquer, there's not much of a story, right? It is until she kills that God of war, Ares, that we're all like, woohoo, right? We, we cheer for that story. When Jerry Maguire learns what's important in life, right? That's the part of the story that we love. When a hero wins the race, right? Or your protagonist gets the promotion, right? The audience has to have something they're rooting for. And so does your client. So this part is very important. And I often see this omitted on websites. When we show customers what their lives can look like, if they use our products and services, they buy our products and services because they want to achieve that future. They want to achieve what that looks like. They want to accomplish that task, right? They want to get rid of this pain point. They want to solve this problem that's driving them bananas. They want to solve the problem that's causing a lot of problems to their bottom line. 
right? So you need to create that story and help them understand what it looks like to work with you. How much better will life look like, right? If they hired you versus your competition. And this is how you differentiate, differentiate yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you're not helping them show how to get to the other side, is it a solution? Because that's what your client wants, right? That's what a solution is. But the opposite is true, right? Again, right? We talk about how the hero wants to walk into the light and away from darkness, right? So same as your client, you need to show your customers the consequences of not doing business with you. Now, I've had many conversations about this, the consequences part, right? I need you to know that there's, if there's nothing can be lost in your story, if nothing can be lost in your marketing message, there's no story. There's no solution. Again, movies, analogy, right? If, if your hero is try, trying to disarm a bomb, except for the fact that in 10 minutes into the movie, you find out the bombs are dead, right? The rest of the movie, nothing happens. It's great. Again, everybody's happy-go-lucky. Boring, right? It's a boring story. Well, your client kind of goes through the same thing. If I don't know what life is going to look like for me at the end of this journey, do I want to take that leap? Can I trust that you're the guy to hire? Because I'm going to tell you, if you don't share your consequences as to whether the hero can take action or not, is the solution as effective, right? And again, I don't mean the world is ending kind of problem. That's what we would refer to as the bro marketing. And I have a feeling most of you here are not into that sleazy, manipulative type of marketing. That's why you came here right? Is to tell a story about your brand. So I'm going to say again, if there's no consequences for doing business with you, there's no reason to do business with you. This is a story. Your marketing message is a story. It's nearly every story you see at the movies or read in a book. A character has a problem and meets a guide that gives them a plan that calls them to action that either ends in success or failure. People are either motivated to avoid failure or experience success, right? Um, I would think of like a travel agent. The, the, the end result is to be on a beach somewhere, enjoying the sunshine with a cool glass of something with a cute umbrella in it. And the, the story felt positive but the pain point was, is the person probably doesn't want to spend all that time organizing that trip, right? So define what your customer wants or the stakeholder wants, or you could lose if they don't engage in your business, right? We have to define what is at stake. Could they lose money? Their, could their health? Could their health be at risk? Would their house continue to leak? Just imagine if you don't fix your roof, if I don't know if we have any roofers here. That's the problem. The problem is just, do you need to fix your leaky roof? If you don't fix your leafy, leaky roof, what's gonna happen? Gets in your drywall, gets into your studs. Um, I can assure you that that project's gonna be a heck of a lot more costly if you wait and don't fix it now, right? Your consequences. So you must answer the question of what is, what's in it for them and what are the consequences of not doing business with you? So now where I know you guys' wheels are turning, your ladies' wheels, you're they're turning, right? So you're probably wondering, is my story clear? How do I know if my story's clear, right? Hopefully you're not actually right now looking on your phones, <laughs> looking on your website going, what do, I, my, what do my call to actions look like? What am I saying? Are my call to actions clear? Is my story clear? How do you know? The key to a great story is clarity, right? This means you must be willing to leave all that good stuff that you think is good stuff on your editing room floor. Don't bring that in, right? You can't include everything in the kitchen sink in your message. You have to make it simple and clear. They need to be able to read it and absorb it and digest it. Don't confuse them with a bunch of other things that they don't need to survive and thrive, right? the reason why they're looking at your website or looking to you to help them in the first place. So the story of our organizations 
is about somebody, but it shouldn't be about us, right? It should be about our customers. And if you're a nonprofit, it's about your donors. It's about the cause, right? So when we use this formula that I'm about to show you, we're going to invite customers into a story and they will respond. So there's some key questions we're gonna go through that we need to ask whenever you're creating a clear message. What do your customers want? This is probably the most important question you need to answer because if you don't know what your customer wants, the rest of your message is gonna fall flat. Second question you need to ask is, what's the problem my customer is experiencing? Now remember, your question that they want answered is not just a bunch of bullet points of your services. That's probably not answering a question. It could, but most likely not. They're not buying into your services. That's what, I'm, that's what I need you guys to remember. They're not buying into your services. Those are the tools. They're buying into what you do to solve their problem. How you do it comes after. The third question is, have you positioned your brand as the guide to the hero or are you playing the hero? When you go back to your office or after this webinar, you can easily take a self audit of your own website, right? Count how many times you say we on our website. What I mean by that is we do this, we do that, we've accomplished this, we do this for our clients. We've won all these awards. Well, this is a story about you. You're the hero in your story. So how does your customer fit into that story? Because this is all about you. Now, hopefully, maybe some of you go, ah, oh, no, I have you in mind. So in your website, maybe some of you here have got onto this and you're, you're talking about the client. Do you experience this? You can achieve this success. This is for you. This isn't about me. This is about you. Do that self-audit. The fourth question is, have you created the plan? The plan, it's so simple. It's kind of like when you think I used to go to chapters and you, you get books on, you know, wine for dummies or things like that. It sounds so simple, but have you created a clear plan for your hero? Who in the day, right? How do they... What do they need to do? How can they access you? What's the plan? What can they expect? Don't assume that they know your process. Again, with the get started. Because get started doing what, right? What is the process? It's your process, not their process. Let them know what can they expect? What is that three-step plan? Show them where to go. Are your calls to action clear? right? Ditch the learn more. And I'm going to tell you, especially after this pandemic, after three years and all of us doing Zoom calls and self-development, all these things, everybody I've talked to, 99.9% .9 of people are tired of learning more. We're done. We're exhausted. We're tired. We don't want to learn more. Just give us the answers. Give us the direction. Tell us where to go. So don't say learn more, but be clear. Book your appointment here call for a quote, schedule your appointment, view this tutorial, sign up for this event, right? Tell us specifically what your call to action is. Have you explained what their life will look like if you do business, if they do business with you? Don't be scared, right? To tell them the success of what they can expect again. Stay away from the long term. Your life will be a dream forever. You're going to make a million dollars. You're going to be rich for life. Okay. I don't mean those kind of successes. Let's dial it back and let's talk about the short term successes that your clients can expect. If you do have the fact that you're going to give them a million dollars, you do you. But <laughs> I'm thinking probably not. Stay away from those long-term promises. The successes that are short-term usually are more effective. That also differentiates you from the bro marketer and an authentic business. Give them those three, three or four steps that they know that they can do. 
Have you explained the negative consequences of not doing business with you? Don't shy away from this. This is also important. Again, it's not the doomsday stuff. I used to work with, with folks um, who used to tell their clients that if they didn't buy this widget, their businesses were going to tank. Well, that's not cool. That's not we, what we mean by negative consequences. That's taking it too far, right? That's this long-term negative effect. You don't have that kind of power, right? But you can explain the short-term negative consequences. Again, back to the leaky roof. What are the consequences if I don't fix my roof, right? I have to fix the rotten walls, the drywall. My expenses are going to be more if I wait. And remember, sometimes negative consequences can be status quo. Literally status quo. If nothing changes, that could be their biggest pain point, right? You have to know what your client wants. You have to know what their client is experiencing, the problem they're experiencing, and then tap into that. Now, this is not something you would have seen. This is a story brand, story brand map that I use. It's called a brand script. So this is a simple framework that we use, that I use as a story brand guide to help you identify these elements that it just took you through. Once you create the elements of your story, everything in your messaging should come out of one of these elements, these little snippets that you can use for smaller spaces, social media, things like that. It helps you stay focused. It helps you get rid of the clutter and it helps you keep things to the point for your prospects so they'll understand what you solve. If you put anything in an email, right? And on your website, of course, even in a sales proposal, that's not based in these seven elements shouldn't be there. You're confusing your client and you're making them read stuff and you're making them burn more brain calories than they need to. So what, what's my plan? What's my three-step plan? You can get your copy, right? You can get your copy of Building a Story Brand by Don Miller, great book. And you can book your clarity call with me. You can send me an email, Nicole at smartcatmarketing.ca. Step two, we'll develop a custom plan, help you clarify your message. You can stop wasting money on marketing materials, right? Because if your message isn't clear, everything else that you're doing, driving traffic to, is not probably converting. And then from there, we'll go in number three, we'll clarify all your marketing material so that it reflects your new, clear, and powerful message. So if you only remember one thing from today, it's this. If you confuse, you'll lose, but you don't have to. I can help you clarify your message so customers will listen to you. We have a system that works and it'll work for you. Thanks so much. Incredible, thank you so much, Nicole. I love the, um, the walkthrough you did with the storyboard. Um, it's really nice to kind of lay that out. Awesome. Thank you. I love that. Um, so we do have some questions um, and feel free to, uh, for the participants to add more questions in there. Um, but thank you so much. That was uh, extremely insightful and um, I can't wait to kind of digest it uh, later today. So one of the questions is tell us about one of your uh, most successful campaigns. Um, and if you want to incorporate kind of your storytelling and whatnot in there as well, that would be great to hear. Well, a lot of my clients have um, signs, you know, DNAs. So mm -hmm. we'll just kind of take this on an overview. We've had a lot of success. I've had a client out of the U.S. recently who they were a larger company trying to acquire new clients. So they were really, really good at maintaining their current clients, but they were having a hard time where they were struggling was bringing in and acquiring new clients. And when we got into this and we right to the foundation of their website, again, it was, they were playing the hero in their story, mm. right? They were weeing their way through it. We do this, we do that. Here's our accomplishments, accomplishments. Here are all our awards. So their sales might have been, I think, well, I don't know if I actually want to give any percentages, but they were, they were, they were kind of, they were doing okay. Let's just yeah. say they were doing okay, right? A simple change from hero to guide 
that alone, their sales went up 25% in three months. Wow. That's substantial. It is. So that what that means is, is people that they were getting the traffic, but they weren't converting. Mm-hmm. Right. So people, they were doing the blogs, they were doing the, all the things they were driving the traffic. They were doing Google ads, driving traffic, but their website wasn't converting for them. So they were wondering, okay, we're driving all this traffic. What's happening. Right. So we knew it was the message, right? The message right. needed to shift. So that, that was probably, and this was with a bigger uh, B2B business. Mm-hmm. We've had smaller solopreneur success here in Nova Scotia, where I had a client tell me she was, she was doing okay. You know, she was doing her, her low six figures in her business. Mm-hmm. We did the same thing. We changed the structure of her website. We changed some of the ways she, she was promoting in through her email campaigns, Mm -hmm. focus more on the problems that she was solving. And she told me that her sales went up 70%. Wow. So it it really makes a huge difference. Um, If you just, it could be one thing that you adjust and uh, it makes all the difference to the receiver of the message. The receiver. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that. Wonderful. Do you have another one here? Um, what resource gaps and constraints does one need to overcome to achieve the story brand strategy? It's a pretty big question. <laughs> it's a big question, but the answer is not complicated. Perfect. So again, um, if, if at the end of the day, you don't want to work with me, that's totally fine. Grab this book, Building a Story Brand. There's a lot of um, storybrand.com has a lot of resources there for you. They have a resource called businessmadesimple.com. Lots of resources for small businesses there that are free, right? They don't don't cost you any money. But I would also encourage you, the other book is called Marketing Made Simple. And Marketing Made Simple goes through these seven steps. So it, it, it'll embellish on these seven steps right. and what it means and how do you accomplish that in your message? So I know that was a big question, but to find the gaps is, is to go through the framework. You can work again with somebody like me. What I do is help you pull the message out of you. Your message is in there somewhere. Mm. You just need a guide to help pull it out of you so that it resonates with your current client. Did mm-hmm. I answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's easy to sometimes get uh, lost in the weeds of what our messaging is. You know, you could be in a team meeting and trying to kind of work through different language and um, topics and things like that. But um, I love those two resources. And if you can, could you type those into the chat? I'm working here with Naja. Um, If she could type those into the chat, um, that would be awesome. Even Nicole, I think you have access to it as well. Okay, perfect. Um, someone asked, do you work with or coach business owners who are just starting? So that's a tough question because just starting can mean a few things. If you're brand spanking new and you've never had a client yet, this will be hard for you, right? Because you really need to have done the research, get an idea what your client wants, and experience your own pain point of what's not working in your message for you to really, to really appreciate this seven step framework. I, I often, when I get startups working with me, I might guide them in the right direction and get them started first, but this seven step framework really works for businesses that have established enough that the rev, they have generated some revenue. So they have an idea, they have some of their own success stories and, and wins already tabled. Mm. It works better and it's easier for them to grasp this concept. But certainly as a newbie, as a newbie, again, read the book. Read the book. It's There's a lot of really excellent nuggets in here that'll help guide you on maybe how to do the research, how to do your market research before you hit the, hit the floor running right? That's, mm-hmm. that's another thing I see is, is people starting their businesses without knowing what their client wants. And then they wonder why mm-hmm. they're struggling getting the clients or closing clients or getting clients in the first place is because they don't know what the client wants. So I guess that would be my advice as a new brand spanking new, do some research, do some surveys, do some polls, ask your potential clients, what is they the want that they want? And what are the problems that they're experiencing 
And can you solve those problems? And if you can, woohoo. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I love that question. Um, and then we have one more as well. What are some important questions one needs to think about when building their marketing strategy? So maybe top two or three questions. Um, and I guess you kind of answered one there, actually, to, to focus in on your your customer and your consumer. Uh, but what your are customer, some other consumer here in Nova Scotia? I see two biggest things. People don't I see I see entrepreneurs not doing enough research and understanding their market. Where, where, where are they going in the market and how are they going to position themselves? And that also has to do with price, right? So if you haven't researched what you're pricing, how do you know that your market is going to hold mm. that price? Because it's okay for somebody from a different country to tell you, I, I hear this all the time, increase your prices, increase your prices, you know, increase your prices to, I'll give you a quick, like say you're selling something at $2,000 and somebody's telling you to sell it for 10. Right. Can your market here, if you're selling here in Nova Scotia, will it work? Maybe it will if you do the right research. Mm -hmm. my, my point is do your research. So the two biggest things for marketing is you have to do your research. You have to know your marketing. You have to know what your client wants. You have mm -hmm. to know what your client wants. So it's not about what is my expertise? This is what I'm good at, which is good. You need that. But sometimes what we think is great is not what our client thinks is great, right? So you need to know that your client thinks it's great too, <laughs> or it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a bit of a slog. So I love that. And yeah. would you say there um, it's important to be fluid as well in regards to kind of adjusting? Oh, on. absolutely. I, I think that would be important because I think it's easy to get stuck in one type of way, you know, absolutely well, the clients that they wanted this. Well, the, the great thing about humans is we're always changing what we want based on, you know, society, politics, funds, you know, um, you know, things going on in the world. Right. So there's one, one thing I say a lot. And if there's, I think there's people here that know me is I say your business needs to evolve and it mm. needs to evolve with your client. And we're in, an, in a market, we're in an economy, we're in an environment now, things are changing a lot, right? So yes, you need to evolve. Hey, I do market research. I tap into my clients four times a year. Yeah. Not awesome. once in four years, right? Yeah. Researching, yeah. asking them questions. Am I still solving their problems? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, this is, this is why sales start to you know, decrease a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think people appreciate that too, because it means you're involved and you care uh, about them. So I yeah, people that. are craving, I think people are craving customer service again, right? They yeah. really are, especially three years, two years anyway. I know we've been back to kind of normal, but two yeah. years of no connections, your clients are craving that just as much as you are. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, we're wrapping up here. Do you have any uh, famous last words you want to share with the group before um, we end up here, Nicole? I'll just I'll just repeat the the whole if you confuse, <laughs> you lose. My biggest advice, especially when it comes to websites, because that's tends to be the foundation of our real estate mm -hmm. for businesses is I know we can do so many things, right? We can do so many things for our clients. But the thing is, is keep some of it, keep some of it for later, keep some of it when you have discovery calls or, or when you close the client and that might be the opportunity to maintain them and keep them. Don't confuse them with a bunch of clutter. Mm -hmm. Keep your websites clear. Keep your call to actions clear. Keep your message yeah. clear. That's probably the biggest, the biggest thing I can, I can say. Lovely. And we just had a question come in um, around 1044. Can you repeat the website with free resources? What is that website again? We'll put if that you go to business made simple, business made simple dot com, dot com. Okay. you can probably even if anybody wants to go on my website, if they forget, I, I do have an affiliate link. So yep. there is an affiliate link in my footer. Okay. Of my whips of my website for business made simple. Um, that would be wonderful if you wanted to click okay. my affiliate link. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, <laughs> Businessmadesimple.com. We have, there's a lot of resources. If you can't find them, if you have a problem, you have my email, anybody here, I don't bite. 
Um, I'm not a pushy <laughs> salesperson. If you want the link to the brand script, um, just pop me an email and I'm more than like, I would be more than happy to give you the link to just the brand script itself. Super. Awesome. Well, that brings us close to the end here. Um, I am going to do a shameless plug for the chamber since uh, we're here. Uh, we are hosting our first economic forum coming up on May 9th, um, and that will discuss how governments and businesses uh, need to react and respond to ensure the they steward the economy in a way that maximizes potential for all Nova Scotians, which is definitely a hot topic right now. Um, so that's on May 9th. It's called the Economic Forum, and you can find that information on on the chamber website but thank you so much Nicole this was insightful again I love to reflect and I'm a big storyteller too I think I get that from my dad he always has jokes and he loves telling stories and I'm I'm so appreciative that I have that trait and you know you just kind of laid out a lot of benefits to it so um, what I can recommend is get out there and start talking to people and and sharing stories because it's a real good way to connect um, so thank you for reiterating that and sharing your knowledge. Really thank appreciate you. that. Um, so if you want to get in touch with Nicole, we can share her email to the attendees as well. Um, and you can also find the information on the website with this webinar. And we'll be posting this as well on YouTube. So if you want to, you know, review it again and listen in, um, you can certainly do that on the Chamber uh, site. And I know that, Nicole, you recorded it as well. So um, lots of resources to kind of go back and watch it. Uh, but thank you again and enjoy the sun. It's coming out here in HRM. So beautiful. Um, enjoy Thursday. And thank you so much again, Nicole. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thanks, everybody.